Streaming now, this is the Wood TV Live Desk. Good evening, everyone. Phil Pinarski here with the Wood TV Live Desk. Hope you're all having a great day so far. Polls have officially closed to cross the state of Michigan for the May 2nd election. And News 8, of course, is your local election headquarters. So we will have you covered all throughout the night on some of these key races. And to talk about what's going on specifically here in Kent County, we are now being joined by the Kent County Clerk, Lisa Posthumous Lines. Lisa, how's it going? Busy day, I'm assuming. Well, happy election day, Phil. Thank you for having me tonight. Mm -hmm. Yes, no, absolutely. And, you know, just kind of we want to get started just touching on the voter turnout. Obviously, uh, with some of these smaller elections, the voter turnout could be a little bit lower. What have you guys sort of seen uh, so far today as far as people coming out and casting their ballots? Yeah, typically these May elections are um, are extremely more lower turnout than um, our November and our August elections, especially especially in the even years. Um, so, you know, it's not going to be any surprise when we see that um, there is a lower, um, lower than, than ideal voter turnout. Um, what we're, it's hard to say right now because we haven't received yet our results from the in-precinct uh, and especially from the in-precinct um, votes. So we don't know exactly what the voter turnout is going to be, but I can kind of, I can kind of extrapolate a little bit. Um, we have, this election, there are uh, just there are just over 145,000 voters in Kent County eligible to cast a ballot in this election. That means their that means their jurisdiction has an election on the ballot. And of those vote of those eligible voters, we've issued um, just under 23,000 absentee ballots for this election, and we've received back 18,751 ballots. And so. We know that there are at least 18,751 absentee ballots out there. There, there could be more because that's that number is as of about 7:30 this evening. So there's still a half. There was still a half an hour um, of time left between now and the close of polls. Plus, we will be implementing um, implementing part of a proposal two of 2022 provision that allows for military and overseas ballots to be um, tabula uh, accepted and tabulated within six days after the election if they're postmarked. And we do have, I think, we do have a small handful of those ballots that are still out. So it remains to be seen whether those ballots will be sent back. But based on just the absentee numbers that we have, we're looking at about a 13% voter turnout. That's not including any in-person uh, voting. And so I expect we'll we'll see anywhere from um, 15 to 20%, maybe even higher turnout tonight. Mm -hmm. Right, and you did mention that with some of these things, we are expecting a lower voter turnout, but is that number, that 15 to 20% projection, is that maybe a little on average? Is it a little bit more, a little bit less than what we t traditionally see with these elections? Uh, that's a, that's about average. Um, we've hit a low point of maybe 6%, 6.5% um, one year. I think that was, that was, uh, no, I'm sorry. We, we've hit a low of about 10%. And that was just recently um, in May of 2021. So we fluctuate anywhere from 10% uh, all the way up to 29%. We hit um, we hit 29% uh, voter turnout, I believe, in um, oh gosh, in May of 2020. And so it can fluctuate from that 10 to almost 30%. So anywhere 15 to 20% would be about about average for this um, this May election. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, we are still waiting on those results to start coming in. We should be seeing it in, over the next couple of minutes here and over the right. rest of we the night as well. That's right. We no longer um, modem our in-precinct results in. Um, it's simply the technology became antiquated and we wanted to be able to ensure um, ensure that security. And so those, you know, we used to say be able to say, when I know results, you'll know results. But what happened, um, what happens now is uh, after the polls close, our all of our precincts receiving boards will um, they'll gather their their materials. They'll get uh, print off the election results tape, close the polls down, and um, and then they will deliver us the in-person uh, voting results for us to report to the public. Uh, absentee counting boards we do receive those uh, via um, secure wireless or secure uh, virtual private network and so you might start seeing some absentee numbers up even before you'll see in-person results come up so 
Um, generally speaking, while it takes a little longer on the front end for us to, to start um, receiving and reporting results, uh, it certainly doesn't take longer out of the whole, you know, the whole um, process. So we'll, we'll, we expect, I hope to um, have results completed by midnight, but mm -hmm. you just never know. Right, absolutely. And have you run into any issues so far as far as uh, tabulating the votes? Um, I know we're still a couple hours away from having those final numbers, but have there been any issues tabulating them, any issues gathering them, any issues really in general uh, so far in this election as far as Kent County is concerned? It's been a very smooth election. Um, so, you know, a few troubleshooting spots here and there. Um, our equipment um, again, we test and, and do so publicly. We test all of our election equipment prior to the elections to make sure that the equipment is functioning properly and that um, the, the tapes are zeroed out. So we're starting it with a fresh slate um, when, we, when we open the polls on election day. So, so not surprisingly, we, we've had a smooth operation with our election equipment. However, we did have a, little, a couple little hiccups with um, our electronic poll books based on you know, the weather. We had a limb fall on a power line, you know, things like that, uh, where it simply just took just a minute for us to, doubt, uh, to regain um, functioning of the e-poll book. And, um, with no no real delay to the voters. So again, um, minor um, troubleshooting issues, nothing out of the ordinary, uh, and that's a good day for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, definitely very good news to hear on that end uh, that there were no major disruptions in the voting process. Lisa, uh, kind of wrapping up, you know, for people that are worried or maybe just curious really uh, about what happens next following this election once the results are in once the final decisions are made what is sort of the next process specifically for the clerk's office kind of in uh, you know finalizing these yeah. votes and what's really the next step in the process of putting these out there sure well we had 13 proposals uh, on the ballot in 14 different jurisdictions we had several um, pol uh, public safety police and fire um, uh, questions on the ballot. We had um, many, many, um, many bond, uh, school bond or um, operating millage proposals on the ballot. And we had a library issue on the ballot in one of our townships. So there, there's a, um, you know, about 25, 20 to 25% of Kent County's voters actually had um, questions on their ballot uh, this for this May election. And so as we, as the polls have now closed um, and our, our uh, election inspectors and our local clerks are kind of wrapping things up um, over in their in their polling locations. Uh, we await for those uh, election results to come to us um, securely. Again, those are through a secure um, virtual private network and hand delivered to my office. Um, we'll take those results. We will um, download them on our secure server and then report those results to the public. They are unofficial until we have concluded what we call the um, the canvas of the election results. And that's where we have um, four not, uh, bipartisan, two Democrats, two Republicans make up the Kent County Board of Canvassers. And it's one of, one of our real crown jewels of Michigan's unique checks and balances to make sure that um, our elections are secure, they're transparent, they're fair, and they're accurate. So on Thursday morning, we will convene the canvas and that is where our canvassers will take the um, They'll take the results tapes and compare them to the poll book to make sure the ba the number of ballots cast uh, match the number of votes cast, um, and we'll just make sure that the um, votes counted, uh, tabulated, match the match the um, votes that were cast. Mm -hmm. Right, fantastic stuff. And Lisa, we know that it's been a long day and you've got a long night ahead of you, so we are going to let you go. We really do appreciate you coming on the live desk today. I want to remind everybody watching, though, real quickly, that, again, News 8 is your local election headquarters. Everything you need to know that was on the May 2nd ballot in your neck of the woods can be found right now with the latest results when they start coming in over on our website, woodtv.com. And you can also find all the latest results. We'll have complete coverage later tonight on News 8 at 11. Lisa, once again, Thank you so much for being here on the live desk today. Thank you, Phil. Mm -hmm. And I want to thank everybody else for tuning in to this latest edition of the Wood TV Live Desk. I'm Phil Pinarski, and we hope you have a great rest of your day.